This podcast is brought to you by KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and I am joined by Kyle, who you probably know, and you probably know me. And if this is your first time tuning into the Out of Spec podcast, welcome. We cover everything electric vehicle news. And one thing that is really great in this space is really what Tesla has done. Even if you don't really like it, they have set the benchmark. They don't do everything perfectly, but the way that they approach getting better is definitely really cool. And one of those ways is with over the air updates. And we're actually talking about one today with a specific model, the Cybertruck, the polarizing angular stainless steel EV that has come onto the market, not only in the hands of Tesla's Tesla's employees, but also real people now. So Kyle, tell me about the -the over-the-air update and what this means for anyone who's driving a Cybertruck and why it matters. Well, and we're talking specifically on charging in this episode. The Tesla recently sent an over-the-air update to all Cybertruck owners, but actually it's not just Cybertruck. Surprise, it's also Model Y with the 4680 pack. So it was for all 4680 vehicles, and that is the form factor of the cell. That's the big juicy cans that they have uh, in Mm. there. And um, the update is a bit... Yeah, Tesla does great software updates. They build cool products, of course. Uh, The Cybertruck charges very poorly, and that was one of my main issues with it. Uh, But now they say they've increased the efficiency of charging. I think if we pull up the article, uh, it was, of course, sent to all the vehicles. A lot of Twitter posters used it, but we're going to pull up the electric one right here, um, which if we can scroll down, I'm pulling up that article as well. It says... um, that the uh, the update results in more efficient charging is the quote unquote uh, that Tesla used. The thing is, it doesn't really well, do that. Why do you say this? So the purpose of the update is if we read the fine text below in the release notes, it says your vehicle now adjusts to the power level of each DC charging station. So battery preconditioning. But did they write this from the freaking update? So battery preconditioning when you're navigating to a charger and then charging can be more efficient. What Tesla is saying is that the overall charging process from the start of preconditioning to the end of charging is more efficient. And essentially, Tesla is just um, doing something that other automakers have been doing for years. And uh, I can use Porsche as an example because I have a lot of experience with Taycan. It's been doing it. For years. And what they mean by this is if you are going to a 250 kilowatt or 350 kilowatt one day version four charger, you want your battery and you're at high state of charge, you need your battery pack toasty to accept the most amount of juice uh, possible. But if you're just going to a 25 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt or urban supercharger, 72 kilowatt, DC fast charger, you don't really need your battery all that warm to accept 72 kilowatt peak. And so therefore, what Tesla is essentially saying in this update is that they are adjusting your on arrival battery pack temperature based off of the expected peak charging speeds and your arrival state of charge to say, how long are you going to hold those for? So actually what's what, uh, and I can let you ask some questions or if you need some clarification uh, for the audience, Francie, but I think this is what Tesla is saying when they say more efficient charging. It's not actually that the charging process is more efficient because that's already fairly efficient. It's the preparation for charging is more efficient or at least appropriately um, energy intensive for the expected arrival and power at the charger. Yeah, I, I think that does. I mean, it makes sense to me. So when you say charging efficiently, and I think folks might think, oh, well, I'll get a more efficient charge. So actually, the maybe there's something to do with the energy that is coming into my EV. No, but this is more about optimizing, like you're saying, those first steps so that the Cybertruck is taking all the information available to it, 
about its temperature, its state of charge, and what the charger it is navigating to can deliver, and then respond in the appropriate manner to get the battery to the most optimal temperature for that charge. That makes sense to me. I I mean, am I understanding so, that correctly? Absolutely. When this first launched, all the Tesla people were like, Kyle, you got to redo your charge testing or 4680 Model Y isn't going to suck on charging anymore. It still does. Uh, Brandon's already tested it in his Model Y. And there will be efficiencies to be gained in the charging curve. And perhaps there are going to be some small benefits to the overall curve because you may not be hitting max temperature anymore, things like that. I'll explain in a moment. But this is not about charging performance while connected. This is about the pre-charging process. So now that that's mm -hmm. out of the way, let's talk about what Tesla was doing before, what they're still doing with their other models, I believe, but I can double check. Um, and what, what this does now. So previously, at least with Model Y 4680 and Cybertruck, but I think my Model S does the same thing. When you navigate to a charger, your battery pack will precondition to a set temperature, regardless of state of charge on arrival and regardless of power level at the charging station. This mm -hmm. is pretty much the same thing that like a manual precondition button does in Kia EV9, Lucid Air, all the GM products now. And... I don't like the idea of manual preconditioning. I like it only to be used as a last case scenario because what I feel should be done is you should use the least amount of energy possible preconditioning your battery pack on the way to a charger uh, so that when you arrive and at the expected power level, you have just enough temperature to bam, get it in and get it ripping on the on the charge. Uh, mm -hmm. In the case of Hyundai Kia Genesis vehicles, as an example, the coldest cell in the battery pack, again, you're only as good as your weakest link, the coldest cell of your battery pack has to be 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that, to me, pretty cool. That makes a lot of sense. But I don't need the battery pack at 21 degrees Celsius if I'm only going to a 50 kilowatt charger. That's what I would need if I need 240 kilowatts of charging speed on those vehicles. So in that case, I might only need 12 or 15 degrees Celsius, which means if I use manual preconditioning or the Tesla logic, I'm actually burning more juice than I needed. And then I have to use more cooling during the charging session because I started with a warmer battery. And so you have inefficiencies on both ends. This uh, preconditioning that adjusts for arrival state of charge and expected power is so important to reducing excess consumption, excess wear and tear on your heating and cooling components, and I think providing a better ownership experience. Um, for example, Tycon, when you get to a charger at very low states of charge, will actually chill the battery down to a pretty cold temperature. And that is so if you plug in at 0% or 5%, you have the most amount of thermal headroom for where the battery requires a warmer temperature for fast mm -hmm. top charging. Mm -hmm. It can raise through the charging process, but you're not going to overheat and smoke the battery um, during that topic, which is if you had manual cool. preconditioning, it may not know, it'll warm up, mm -hmm. and you'll hit your max thermals quicker. Sure. Unless the manual preconditioning asked you a question, what kind of charger are you going to? And no owner would ever know this. Well, Francie would. But yeah, yeah uh, uh, okay, so that's really cool that what Porsche does, of course, that is just optimal engineering, I'd say, to make sure that the, it's as efficient as possible of a whole process. Because like you're saying, there are a lot of steps along the way where you can lose efficiency, whether it's in heat loss or what have you. So Tesla And that's what Tesla's doing now with the at least with 4680Y and Cybertruck they're basing mm -hmm. that logic around the charging curves where they need to be. My guess is if you are going to navigate to a supercharger and arrive at like 75 or 80% state of charge really high, you're going to see that thing rip the heating hardcore so that you can get a good top charging session because mm -hmm. you need the battery warm to reduce the resistance for top charging. Whereas mm -hmm. on, um, you know, if you're going to arrive to a high power charging station or even a low power charging station at very low state of charge, you might see it cool down more or just relax and not run any preconditioning at all. This is a great, fantastic update. So do the other models not have this ability already? It's something I need to test, and perhaps I'll do an out-of-spec reviews video showing this um, because I think it would be cool to like plug in all the scanner stuff and show it working, but I at least wanted to make it 
clear right now because I don't have a 4680 vehicle to test in Colorado at the moment that the charging process and the charging curve, at least at first glance, does not have seemed to change at all. It is just about the preparation for charging. So what would be the uh what what would be the motivation to just do it to the Cybertruck and then the Model Ys with the 4680 batteries? Yeah, that's the confusing part. Those are the ones that maybe have the least efficient cooling package um, because, mm-hmm. again, the cells are so big, maybe they can't cool them as efficiently, and maybe perhaps they were hitting max cell temperature during charging sessions because they were preconditioning far too much to a set temperature. Um, because the vehicles just had like a warm to 35 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius for charging. I don't know. Could be a guess. Uh, It could be that the other Tesla vehicles have received the update without telling users. Sure. Um, I can test it really quickly. I mean, I have a Model X and a Model S here. uh, So when as part of that video, I will also test those vehicles and show their performance. I'll navigate one to an urban supercharger and one to a version 3 supercharger, and that's a way to tell. If, sure. If the vehicles, uh, you know, have different logic, that would be good. And doesn't Brandon Flash have a Model Y with the forty six eighty? Yeah, and he's on a road trip actually. So perhaps we could ask his experience, and he's got all the data uh, once he gets back from his uh, Florida trip. Yeah, that would be great. I'm sure uh, we'll we'll remind him to log it. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm sure he was logging sometime before. So maybe we could see if there's a distinct difference that he's either noticing or that is, you know, in those details that. He yeah. can get I don't. Too. I don't think the curve is improved because I saw him on Twitter posting that it's still really bad. So it sounds like there's been no improvement to the charging curve uh, whatsoever. Which uh, Rick explained to me. Would that be possible to really improve the charging curve over with an over-the-air update, or is it more of these smaller things that are like we're just going to try to make it as efficient as possible where we can? It seems like that wouldn't be something that was easy. That it's dependent on battery chemistry and not necessarily software. Yeah, and form factor of the cell, and there's some there's some definite physical limitations with 4680, and there's probably some optimizations still to be had as they have more fleet data as every day goes by. Uh, I'm not sure what those are. I'm not a battery chemistry expert. Can they adjust charging curves over the air? Absolutely. Will they? We can only keep our fingers crossed, but it's been over a year of Model Y 4680 being on the market uh, and in pretty high quantities, and they still charge worse than almost any new electric vehicle on the market well, in terms of the overall curve. There you have it. So maybe you'll go running around seeing what you can find out with the S and the X, of course, which doesn't your dad want that back? No, he told me to keep it because he doesn't have room for it. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, great. So we're going to have Lucky it out you. here. We're, we're going to do a race to Vegas. I'm going to hold on at least for a couple more weeks, and then we'll get it back to him uh, sometime maybe in March, it sounds like. Sounds great. Yeah. Race to Vegas. Sounds fun. All right. So this is a, an update that, you know, charging efficiency, you got to break it down to see exactly what that means with this kind of update. And I think it's, it's clear that they're doing some efficiency improvements, hopefully at, uh, you know, these little steps along the way. So that's pretty cool. We'll see if it goes to other models and do a bit more investigation, but thanks for clearing that up, Kyle. Appreciate it. Yep. Happy to. Think it'll be cool. Can't wait to test it. Look at the logic. Pull the data. Uh, Hard to pull all the data on Cybertruck because I don't think the normal scan my Tesla stuff works on that. Uh, But we can use service mode to gauge roughly uh, battery pack temperatures. And yeah, if you notice any vastly different charging curves, if you're a 4680 Tesla owner, Cybertruck or Model Y, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can test those vehicles and get that data in. Um, But uh, I've not seen, it's now been five days since this update's rolled, something like that. And I've not seen uh, anyone comment on improved charging performance, just maybe some different preconditioning logic. Yeah, definitely let us know. Of course, you can find Kyle on Twitter or X, whatever, whatever you're feeling like calling it today. Thanks, Kyle. This is some cool information. I think it'll be cool to see what kind of over-the-air updates come in the future as well to quote-unquote improve charging efficiency along the way. So thank you, and thank you everyone for plugging in with us for another electric episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>